Did Nathan Harmon cover up his daughter Carrie's drunk driving? And is he covering up something far bigger and far more sinister? Welcome to part two of Harmon Files. Last month, my organization, You Are the Power, discovered an allegation against Berkeley County, West Virginia Sheriff Nathan Harmon. His daughter Carrie had gotten drunk, crashed her vehicle and damaged someone's property, and Nathan covered it up. After some investigation, we released our first video about this incident and asked the public to contact us with any additional info. And boy, did you deliver. Not only did we find out much more about this incident, but we found out something about Nathan that is far worse than anything we'd seen about him before. More on that in a bit. But the person who provided us with the most new information was, believe it or not, Nathan himself. Yep, after his disastrous initial handling of this controversy, which included releasing an official statement where he made a bunch of claims, releasing body cam footage that debunked those claims he just made, and then making the video private shortly afterwards, giving us just enough time to copy it, while also showing that he definitely has something to hide, Nathan went on a local media interview tour to, well, make it worse. If you've been subscribed to me, and if you haven't, be sure to press that subscribe button, you know that I routinely recommend that you never speak to police or the public about criminal allegations. And Nathan gave us a perfect example as to why that is. You know, you ask them more than once what happened, so how much does that change? Yes, Nathan, you're about to show us many examples of that in this interview. So let's take what Nathan said and show all of his lies and inconsistencies. Ready? Okay, so right off the bat, he decides to lie about things that don't really matter. He first says that Carrie never called him that night. When I got the phone call, it wasn't from her number. Um, I was advised that she was in an accident. But who else would have? And according to Carrie, she did call him right after she crashed. Okay, well, he's on his way. I already know. I called him. He also says that he has a strict policy against using his name for favors. Uh, there's no name dropping here. There's no favors. There's Don't ask for any favors. Don't call me for any favors. Deputies, I've never received a phone call at my house from a deputy saying, well, what do you want me to do with it? If someone name drops me, times whatever you're finding by 10. Oh, yeah? My dad's Nathan Harmon. He's on his way right now. So apparently Nathan can't even tell the truth about trivial stuff. I wonder how honest he'll be about serious things. Let's find out. The interviewer asked Nathan if Carrie had been drinking. And I asked, on camera, had she been drinking? And the deputy indicated, no, not that I can tell. End of story. I think one of the very first things I asked was, uh, had she been drinking? And uh, he said, uh, uh, no, not, to, not that I can tell. Or, no, I can't tell. Except that's not what the deputy actually said. Is she drinking? Oh, I can't tell. Okay. So your daughter drives off the road, totals her car, and damages someone else's property. Your deputy isn't sure if she's been drinking or not, and chuckles. Time for a breathalyzer, right? Was uh, a breathalyzer administered at the scene of the accident? No. Oh. Well, that's probably just because Nathan is inexperienced on DUIs and doesn't know when it's appropriate to breathalyze someone. I was huge on DUIs. I think I got 73 in one year. I always have one with me. No. Oh. So then he knows exactly what to do in this kind of situation. Um, I, I don't know. It's been a while since I've, I've actually done uh, DUIs or processed one myself. Hmm. So the sheriff, who's a former state trooper, more on that later, and is huge on DUIs, doesn't really know much about them. Well, thankfully, this interviewer helps to explain why breathalyzing carry would have made sense in this scenario. From the history that you've been explaining here, it would appear that a breathalyzer would have been something that made sense, considering her history, and the fact that there was speed involved in this accident, excessive speed for that road at night. Would a breathalyzer not have made perfect sense here? No. Well, I mean, Nathan is the expert. Whether that's policy, I have no idea whether it is or not. Yes, of course. And he obviously trusts Carrie not to get involved with drinking and driving or any other untrustworthy behavior. My daughter doesn't make the best of decisions, and I know this history. Yeah. You know, my, my daughter uh, hasn't been truthful all the time. Um, you know, my suspicions of, of my daughter's shenanigans enough for m my wife and I to take necessary measures to be proactive about it. I've spoken with multiple people in terms of 
you know, substance abuse, drug addiction, stuff like that, to get advice, seeking advice in terms of potentially helping my daughter if we had identified a potential problem with her. We did have our suspicions of potential issues that she was having in her life. I see. So that definitely sounds like even more reason to breathalyze her. No. Well, okay then. So if Carrie wasn't breathalyzed, why did she tell her cousin Hannah that she blew a 1-6 and that the only reason she wasn't arrested for DUI is because her dad is the sheriff? Well, Nathan has an answer to that, and yes, it's stupid. I've got evidence that the actual uh, communications were altered. Told you. So anyway, his evidence that the communications were altered is that there are sites where you can make fake Snapchats. That's not what evidence is, of course. I'd imagine that the sheriff would know what evidence is. I have no idea. But we have evidence, as in actual evidence, that the communications were not altered directly from Carrie's family. Hannah, Carrie's cousin, and the person she had that conversation with, came out with evidence that the conversation is real. This includes original screenshots of the conversation, of Carrie's profile, and the time that they had the conversation. She also revealed that she spoke with Carrie, who told her on the phone that she blew a 1-6. Later, she spoke with Nathan himself, who told her he needed help clearing his name. Hannah refused. She released her call log and proof of both Carrie and Nathan's numbers to show that she was telling the truth. So what does Nathan have to say about the fact that his own family is saying that he and Carrie are lying? That so-called aunt hasn't seen Carrie for over 15 years. Well, that's also a lie. Kelly, Carrie's aunt and Hannah's mother, released photos showing that the family was very close up until a couple of years ago when Kelly shared her concerns about Carrie's behavior. Even after that, Carrie continued to remain in contact as evidenced by the conversations and call logs. So is Nathan lying when he says Carrie wasn't breathalyzed, or is Carrie lying when she said multiple times that she was and that she blew twice the legal limit? And why was Nathan interfering with an investigation into his daughter by going into her vehicle? Got the valuables out of the vehicle. That couldn't wait until after the investigation. And discussions with your deputy, you indicated that you needed to check something in the vehicle. You took the deputy's flashlight and went over to the vehicle. What was it that you were checking for? Well, uh, just to to clarify, I I didn't say in the vehicle. I need to check the vehicle real quick. Uh, One, I I never cracked a single door on that vehicle. I never entered the car or anything. I took a knee, looked behind the tire, tracker's still there, I'm done. So which is it? You got your valuables out of the vehicle or you didn't touch it? One of these is a lie. You know, you ask them more than once what happened, so how much does that change? I guess so, Nathan. Unfortunately, we can't tell from the body cam footage because the deputy conveniently turns away when Nathan heads to the vehicle. So the only way to find out what Nathan is hiding is to release the unedited dash cam footage. Wait, did he say there's a tracker? I was tracking her car. I had a tracker on her car. What? When you start seeing some warning signs of uh, of things and, and maybe some, um, uh, s- some, some lying of sorts. Then you definitely don't breathalyze her when she totals her car after midnight. But let's get back to that tracker. H- have you subsequently checked the tracker to see what her whereabouts were that night? It was, yep. What were you able to determine? She was coming from a friend's house. Oh, okay. So she wasn't at a bar then. Were you able to determine whether or not your daughter was ever at any establishment that serves alcohol. No, I wasn't able to determine that. Bro, you have a tracker. How do you simultaneously know where she was, but also don't know where she was? Again, one of these has to be a lie. Either you weren't tracking her, or you know full well she was drinking all night. You know, you ask them more than once what happened, so how much does that change? Yeah, no, I know. Now, to be fair, here's something Nathan said that appears to actually be true. I know for a fact she wasn't. Uh, there, I do have a image from social media uh, where um, the owner of Green Frog has openly said that they carry video footage. They have not observed any footage that, that has her there. Yes, the rumor that Carrie was at the Green Frog appears to have been false. In fact, the owner reached out to me as well and said that based on his investigation, Carrie was at Sam and Jane's or wherever her boyfriend's pool team was that night. And other members of the public have come forward to say she was at Sam and Jane's as well, drinking all night and bragging about how she was untouchable because her dad is sheriff. In fact, we have reason to believe that there is at least one video of Carrie drinking and bragging about being untouchable that night. If anyone watching this has that video and would like to share it anonymously, please reach out to me. Now then, Nathan has made his case that he can't be trusted, that Carrie apparently also can't be trusted, and that therefore you can totally trust them. That's why he released the police report of this incident. Nothing to hide here, by gum. 
And for some reason, right in the middle of the investigation, the body cam just turns off. Several minutes before the investigation was over, the deputy just turns it off. Let's hear Nathan's excuse for that. Uh, just as uh, Deputy Henderson shut his uh, camera off, the question you'll hear me ask, or, or at least asked, was uh, I was asking him about a deer. No, we hear you step out of view of the camera, say, I'm curious about something, and then after several seconds of silence, the deputy turns the camera off. Are you covering up a DUI for your daughter? No, I'm not. So then what are you covering up? Because your own testimony shows you're not telling the truth. Now, since we released the first video about Nathan, and after tremendous outcry from the public, the Berkeley County prosecutor has announced that a special prosecutor has been assigned to investigate this incident. So we'll see how that goes. Color me skeptical, but we'll see. But speaking of investigation, as we were investigating this incident, something was brought to our attention about Nathan's past that, if true, is far more sinister than anything we've discovered before. If this is true, not only should Nathan resign, he should never serve in any elected office ever again. We will reveal the details of these allegations tomorrow, so stay tuned for part three of Harmon Files.